Okay, we can start. Seven o'clock bewitching hour. Yep. So I'll take attendance. Uh, Norm. Here. Um, Mike DeBay. Here. Dick Randall's here. Scotty Graves. Here. Deb Harris. Here. Uh, Karen's here, obviously. Uh, Eric. Here. And Paul. I'm here. Okay. We got a good quorum. <laughs> All right. And so the first thing on the menu here, it's this meeting is being recorded, taking attendance. And the first thing is the minutes from the last meeting, which was on the 13th. And we have one guest, right? And we have one guest, Jason Jaguar is on. And so anybody have any comments on the minutes as written or changes? I don't have any comments, Dick. I'll make a motion if nobody has comments. I'm waiting to hear if anybody's got them. No comments. Okay. Hearing none, seeing none. I'll take your Dick, motion. I make a motion. We accept the minutes as written. Yeah. Second. I'll second. second. That was Paul. Yep. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? No one will be abstaining. Unanimous. Hmm? No, Norm's going to be abstaining. Oh, you are? I had to leave the meeting. Oh, oh. okay. Gotcha. Okay. I had to rush to the hospital. How are you feeling, Norm? Much better. Yes. Good, good. All right. Not that meeting. I to leave. Okay. And, uh, so we'll go down. Norm, abstain. Oh, no, you, you, you abstain. Uh, Mike DeBay. Aye. Dick Grannell's aye. Scotty Graves. Aye. Deb Harris. Aye. Eric Muller. Aye. Paul Murphy. Aye. Affirmed. Okay. Public comment. Any public comment? Jason, you have anything? Guess not. Okay, none. Seeing none, we'll move on. Conservation uh, Commission update, Norm. Yes, there was, has not been a meeting mm -hmm. since our last meeting, uh, but this coming Monday, we have a couple items of interest on the agenda. Okay. Uh, 141 Congamon Road is wants to amend their order of conditions and not have to remove their docks in the wintertime. So that will be an interesting discussion. Mm. And then the appeal uh, for the Chapter 91 license is also on the agenda. Okay. So it could be an interesting any, meeting. And any idea why that's on ConCon's agenda? Because it's, uh, it's LLP related. Okay. They're, they're the enforcer on LLP. Okay, I didn't. I didn't think it was LLP related because it's not an LLP. It's a Chapter ninety one license. The LLP is not affiliated with the with state. Commercial. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't think it actually is LLP related because LLP is you know the local permitting program, and the Chapter ninety one license is not the local permitting program. Yeah, that's correct. So. So it's a little strange. I mean, it's fine that they have it on their agenda. It's just I'm surprised they do because it's not, you know, it's not seemingly in their in their wheelhouse. Do you know, Norm, how it was affiliated with the LLP? It's actually LPP, but that's all right. Yeah, LPP. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't mention LLP. It does just to, wants to change the conditions of the Chapter 91 license. Yeah. Order of condition. Uh, I would, I, I would, I would guess conditions. though. I would guess under the LPP that you're supposed to remove your docks regardless That's of correct. who you are. No, no, there, by, no, no there, there's, two separate, there's two separate things here. One of the things that's on the agenda is the that he wants to change the order of conditions. That absolutely makes sense. I understand why that's on Concom's agenda. The, right. The amendment that we filed 
uh, not the amendment, the appeal that we filed to the chapter 91 license, I don't understand why that's on CONCON's agenda because it's not related to, oh. it, in other words, it's not, it, it's it's a state thing. It's not part of LPP at all. Right. It just they may be want a, to discuss it, you know. Just, it yeah. just may be a communication. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So I was just wondering if you knew something. And, right. No, I do not. Okay, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else, Norm, on CONCOM? No. Okay. <laughs> so we can move along to your update on the master plan uh, subcommittee. Okay. Now I'll share my screen. And and you will do your normal thing of summarizing it for the uh, minutes, please. I'll do, I'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Otherwise, I got to take a boatload of notes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so is that showing up on everybody's? Yep. Yeah. 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 I see it. Okay. Very nice too. Okay, so the first question had to do with uh, where in town would you like sidewalks and where would you like additional parking? Uh, and the number one voter for sidewalks was College Highway, followed by South Young Long Yard and None Needed, and you can look right down the list there. Hmm. Now, I don't know, I have walked College Highway from Congamon Road to Town Hall, and it's a scary thing to walk there, I'll tell oh, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cars are going 50-55, and they're close. Yeah. So. And that, that edge of that road isn't exactly friendly to the ankles. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> okay, and as you, the list goes down, it gets pretty small, and really doesn't pertain too much to us. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the parking standpoint, uh, all rail trail access points was the number one vote getter with 74. None yeah. needed None needed was second. And the third one was near Lake Launches and Peach, as there were several complaints about uh, <laughs> unable to park uh, near, near the beach launch areas. Okay. And, and then it gets small very quickly. And the next one asks us to rate our satisfaction with the following town services. And the most favorable was police at 701, followed by fire, plowing, ambulance, transfer station. And you can see down the list as we go. All right, Board of Health didn't fare very well. Sewer systems didn't fare very well. And senior services didn't fare very well. <clears throat> And then uh, there was an additional response, write-in response that were really small. Town administration got the most with eight, eight positives. Mm. And transfer water issues got five negatives. So select board got eight negatives. And then we have uh, how important are the following services and amenities that should be provided over the next 20 years. And wireless fiber was number one, and that is going to happen, as we know. Alternate energy sources was second. Additional community health services was third. Community center with meeting space was next. More emergency services, workforce training and education, and additional senior services. And last but not least, municipal trash pickup. And then there was another write-in here that was very small. Uh, human services got nine, other got 10. So that's pretty kind of meaningless, mm. small, small data. And that's it for uh, this presentation for tonight. We're working on uh, our presentation for uh, the planning board at our next meeting. Good, excellent. Okay. That's a good summary too. It, uh, it's kind of very easy to understand. Thank you. And that's it for me. Okay. <clears throat> Great. So we can take that away. Did it, did it disappear? No, not yet. It's still there. Okay. Sorry. There it is. There okay. It goes. So, so now we can do uh, CRC update. Um, Deb, do you have anything? I don't, we haven't had another meeting, so I, 
I know that Michelle's trying to get you more names of those that helped, but um, okay. she's trying to get them from Scott, and that's why I got the ones I sent to you from Scott. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, so I'll just put on here nothing new. All right. And next is 141 Congamon Road. Um, and Oh, the only thing, the only thing I did include in your package, by the way, just if I can back up for a second, was the article was in the paper about the North Pond Preserve. And you can just read that at your at your leisure. It's page 17 and 18 in there. I just cut it out of the Westfield News. I try and things that kind of relate to us, I try and add to the package. So anyway, we can move on to 141 Congamon Road, which starts on page 19. And so that, following our previous meeting, where we wanted a, a letter to go to the select board uh, that summarized the issues that we have had with 141 Congamon Road. And it took a while to assemble that. There's three pages. It's pages 20, 21, and 22. Uh, and it kind of boils down into the, the categories that we've discussed, which was length of the docks, the 150 foot docks versus originally recommended was 75. So it would not interfere in any You're way, starting shape, to break up with again. the uh, traffic. Yes, you're, you're breaking right. up. Uh, you're, you're, breaking, you're breaking up. All right. Dick, Dick yeah. you may want to just shut off your video for a moment when you're talking because your bandwidth right. may be an issue and you're breaking up. Let me try that. All right. <laughs> See if that helps. Let's yeah, try. Can you hear me? Dick. Oh, Michelle's we, on. We can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just capture uh, the guest, additional guest, before we go on. Otherwise, all right. So we we started on uh, 141. Michelle is where we are talking about that, and we're on page 20 of the reading file, which was the letter that was generated as requ requested at the last meeting to summarize the issues that LMC uh, has identified over the past about a year, I guess now, right? Some, something like that. Um, and so the first one was the, the length of the docks, this, the 150 feet that's on the drawing that was on the first drawing. And then the, the, the next, uh, and versus the 75 we were looking for, I think, and is that, um, I can't see you, so I can't, I believe it's Ken Eggleston. All right. I'm sorry. What are you asking, Dick? Yeah. Who joined? That was Ken, I believe Ken Eggleston. Ken, if you can unmute long enough to just confirm that that's you. <clears throat> All right, I put it down as a question for now. Um, and then the, the uh, doc shown in, the, in there, uh, have 20 vessels per dock. We've gone over all that stuff and we just had to capture that. And the, um, the third item on there was that creates the, the 150 foot long docks creates a no, uh, no wake. It's a headway speed is what it's called per both the uh, CMR that's 323 CMR 2.07 and from the town bylaw, which is just replicates what's in the CMR. So they can issue tickets locally uh, without having to have the state um, use the state tickets. And so that means that it goes right through the area where the uh, culvert is all the way down to the very end, 150 feet past the southernmost dock for uh, the 141 property. And that's that's just the way it is. That's a statement of fact. Um, and so, you know, all basically all the members uh, uh, that are on our committee 
our boaters on conger mine. And so we have a lot of experience. And they, as we said in there, there's roughly 600, because we do a boat survey every year, 600 power boats resident on conger mine, about 1,200 total. And an additional 58 come from the, the uh, two state-owned boat ramps. And mind you that, that it is a great pond and you can't restrict, um, you know, what, what comes from there. They already downsized the north ramp significantly because when I came here, that, that was a big open area and you could park upwards of 150 vehicles in, in that huge um, <coughs> unmarked, un <laughs> un uncontrolled area. They just park everywhere. And that was one of the biggest thorns in the side of the then public access board. So they reconfigured it. They downsized the north ramp down to 40 total spaces, of which 30 are vehicles with trailers and the other 30 are car, car tops or short trailers, just to give you the, what the facts are there. And the south ramp has always been 18 spaces. So that's, it's, it's a mini, <laughs> mini ramp. And then, then we get into, uh, the issues on uh, beyond the state boat ramps, uh, there's a, a, an issue still outstanding with a reported sump pump in the basement. So there's nothing wrong with having a sump pump in the lower level. It's where is it discharged? And that's the concern um, that it's, A, it doesn't go into the lake, but it can't cannot go into the town sewer system by, by the, the sewer regs. And it can't go into the stormwater system either by stormwater regs. You can't put uh, anybody, nobody can put a sump pump into either of those. So it would have to go into a separate, you know, like a dry well <coughs> in the ground. Um, and we just do not know where it goes because it was done by the previous owner. It was installed by the previous owner according to the original owner of the property who saw it and, and was there when it was installed. Um, and so that's, that's another thing that, that has to be, still has to be resolved. Uh, it may be fine. We just don't know where it goes. It's possible it does go into a dry well. Um, and then moving on down, we had, um, identified issues with the, I just got a quick, the, the interference with the interlake culvert, which we will get into later in more detail. <coughs> because there's a map that goes along with this showing, uh, unfortunately, when the drawing was created, it just shows the center line of the culvert, but it doesn't, it assumes that boats are only the thickness of a pencil lead on that, on that uh, drawing. And they definitely have uh, length and width and they have position that they have to have in order to see to get through that culvert. As all of us know, uh, you have to make sure there isn't something coming the other way before you go through. So that that drawing will follow at, a little later in this uh, in that package that uh, went to the select board. Uh, and I uh, think Dick, uh, Dick, did you wind up including the drawing that went in with the uh, with the appeal? Uh, yes, that's here. It's okay. later on. I'm trying to it find comes, it. it comes. Eric, are you talking about the ones that got the curved lines on it that are over closer to the 141 docks? No, but there's a new there's a new drawing. Okay, I see it. It's on page 42. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to go to that and then I can continue, or or has everybody read the rest of this? Read it. Read it. Read it. Yeah. If everybody's I read it, everybody's too. read it. I don't need to repeat it. <clears throat> good, good idea. Okay. So if we move to, it's actually page 42. And in your, in your, uh, I don't know if you can put that up on, on the uh, screen, Karen. If not, the page, page 42 has the plan that was sheet two of four, plan sheet two of four from the, what was filed with the uh, Mass DEP for, <clears throat> excuse me, for the chapter 91 license. And it has the path that the boats take 
coming out of the culvert and the path that the boats take going into the culvert with their with their width and length of the what what spacing Dick, you have to have between boats. Dick, did you want me to address this as we have sure about? sure okay. be my guest. All right. So if you look at page 42, the discussion here is basically that you have, uh, you know, in a in a boat that's going to go through, you have to have a line of sight. You have to be able to look straight through the culvert. And these three hash mark boxes that Dick has drawn are an ostensible boat. And the idea is that, you know, the, um, the pontoon boats now are sort of 22 to 25 feet long and uh, just under eight feet wide. And of course, you know, they, you need a little bit of length, you know, back and forth because the boat, you, you can't, you know, you, you can't have the coat, boats touching each other. And of course, when you're sitting there waiting to go through, your boat moves around a little bit. So you need a little bit of space. Uh, in this case, uh, this has been drawn in um, slightly to the west of the line of sight, you can, even if you move it so it's dead, even with the line of sight, you can kind of see what happens if there's a couple of boats there. Now a boat that comes through by, by um, you know, by uh, 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 Coast Guard navigation standards needs to move to their right, not to their left. So they move to their right of the boats that are in the queue and you can see that when they make that path, that's those arrows that Dick has drawn, you now come very close to the docks. And of course, Dick also drew that if you had a boat in the dock and you had to back out, you'll be backing out directly into the place where people are trying to come around boats that are trying to go through. So we kind of talked this through with the harbor master and with Doug Moglin. And so they saw what the concern was. And the suggestion for a potential remedy was to, to alter this so that the last, uh, this last piece of the, of the northernmost dock wouldn't be there. So basically, you remove, uh, you remove spots that are numbered 28 to 33. And then at that point, it's not that it's perfect. But that would then make the pinch not nearly as bad. And the thought is that would make it much safer. And then we identified one other issue, which is if you look on the southernmost, two other issues. If you look on the southernmost dock and you see spots 11 and 12 that are at the end, the problem with those spots is twofold. The first problem is there is no dock between them. So two boats that are trying to park at 11 and 12 will be running into each other. And those boat, boats that are there are completely unprotected from the wave action coming off the lake. And while there may be a no wake zone there, you can't stop waves that are on the main lake from moving through there. The no wake buoys won't stop the waves. Those waves will still be coming through. And so the concern there is that when, when people are trying to get on and off boats that are on in a completely exposed section that's, you know, broadside to where the waves are going to come from, that that's quite dangerous. And so the suggestion was that spots 10 and 11 should also be removed so that so that there are no boats that are trying to be trying to be docked with full exposure to the lake waves and so that there are no boats trying to be docked where they're nose to nose with nothing between them. Um, so that that's the uh, you know that that's the the long and the short of the suggested remedy uh, that we had. So it doesn't it's not that it makes everything perfect, but it it should improve the safety quite a bit. The other thing that was suggested is to switch which of the which of the docks are being used for um, for marina versus um, versus transient, and the thought is to put the marina docks be, to be the northernmost docks because people won't be pulling in and out of them all the time, whereas the transient docks are transient. And so people will be pulling in and out of them constantly. And the northernmost docks are the ones that interfere with the boat traffic coming through the culvert. So, or, yeah, I'll call it the culvert, but basically, you know, coming through from middle to south pond. And so the thought was if you switch those two, 
then the then the place with the most ghost traffic is the place that's furthest away from where you're going to have you know uh, you know potential um, collisions basically. So that's it, in a in a very short summary. That's sort of what was put forth, um, you know, as part of our our uh, our application for um, you know for for um, uh, uh, what, what's the, oh for appeal on this and and that application appeal for appeal has been submitted. Um, uh, myself. Dick, Doug Moglin, and the uh, the harbor master uh, met and you know discussed this. We we're all in agreement, and the harbor master actually kind of came up with the idea for how we make this a bit better, you know, a bit safer. You know, what Dick and I were talking about is, hey, stop the docks at seventy five feet, which would definitely make this a much safer solution. But as we look, there's no place else to put any of the dock spaces at all because you you run out of frontage. And so, so then, uh, then the, the harbor master had a good idea, which is he said, "Look, you don't get everything out of this, but wouldn't it improve the safety quite a bit if you just took those off?" And I had to agree with him. Yes, that would definitely make it quite a bit safer. So, in the end, it would eliminate eight of the spaces total. Any questions? I just have one, Scotty Graves here. Uh, I, I understand on the northern end. Close to, close to the bridge, I buy some of that. But on the southern end, uh, let's just say on the middle pond, you got all that boat traffic making a big circle in front of Saunders docks. I don't think anybody's ever complained over there about wave action. Yeah, but the the difference there is there's a there's two big differences. One, there's a no wake zone there, but two, you're not exposed to the big wide open lake. At Saunders, you're exposed to that channel. Which isn't pointed at Saunders. It's actually pointed. You know, if you look at at the waves from there, everybody's going in and out that channel. Whereas South Pond, a lot of the waves are actually going off the main lake, directly exposed to that surface, coming straight. I mean, those waves come directly perpendicular to to where those docks are pointed. Saunders is quite different from that with number one, a big no wake zone, and number two, it's at the end of a channel. So the vast majority of boats are going left and right. And yes, some are turning around, but that's, that's they're, not, they're not turning around at full power. It's not like South Pond. No, I, don't agree with, I don't agree with that, because I live on the middle pond, and the majority of boats that are coming down the right side of the lake are making a complete circle and going right back up the other end. The right side of the lake. They're going down the right-hand side by White Street. They continue right around, make the big, big waves heading right towards Saunders gas docks and the docks, and yeah. then it continues going right back the other way. Yeah, but but I mean, I've been there in there plenty of times. They throttle down for that turn. It's nothing like South Pond, where all of the wave action in South Pond goes directly through there, the whole the whole lake. Whereas it, where Saunders in is, it's quite protected comparatively. Well, I don't know if I'd buy that, but anyways, I, I, I lived on White Street for a lot of years and seen a lot of traffic and done a lot of skiing. And we yeah. go right around that cove and right back out and head down towards the middle of the, yeah, but I mean, part of the lake. No, nobody pulls a skier and turns in front of Saunders. Absolutely. We did it for years. We still do it. Well, you right. You may have done it for years, but people really don't do that now because there's too many boats down there to do it. Oh, uh, they're that doing it. Area, That's that a big no wake zone. Congested. It's a huge no wake zone. Yeah. And the whole area is congested and there's a launch down there, too. So the, that whole area is dramatically more protected than anything on south. You say so. Okay. Anybody? Anybody have uh, any additional comments on there, or <clears throat> no? But I, got, I got a question for Eric and Dick. That so that it was sent in with that uh, drawing attached, correct? Yeah, it went. A, that's a the way version. it went. Okay. A color version. A color version yep. went right. And Eric, a couple of times you said eleven and twelve, and you really meant nine. What is it? 11, 10 and 11 every time on that uh, southern one. You're right. You're right. 
it's that's okay. You said it one time years. right, and you said it one time the opposite. So it doesn't. I just want to make sure we're talking 11, 10, 11 there. You, yes. you are absolutely right. 10 and that's 11. That's correct. You, yep. you are correct. That's fine. Yep, my misspeak. You're right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So we have any other questions or, or whatever on on uh, what went to Boston for the appeal? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Um, moving on is that there was a, an issue at Tri PBJ Marina that was pointed out. I don't know how many people saw it, but I had a complaint about it. Um, was that when the the short dock that's for the boarding area, you know, they have that uh, uh, concrete ramp that goes into the lake yeah. where they where uh, people who use that facility uh, to put their boats in to to keep you know to uh, store them there. So it's it's not used very often, but when they do, uh, the boarding dock was <laughs> to the west of that pad, which is in accordance with their <coughs> Section 91 license. This year, it's a new owner. He didn't I, He didn't realize that. He put it to the right of it, and it was sticking out in, right into the, the uh, channel there, which is already tough, trying to get into North Pond. So uh, conservation, Sabrina contacted him. He immediately pulled it out, moved it over to where it used to be. Problem's gone. So long story short done um and so that took care of that that issue very nicely um we just to give you an update because i think it's a little bit unfortunate um, we don't know what's going to happen but ricky's porta potty who we've had for <laughs> more than two decades um we had a series of other ones when we first started which is 30 years ago uh we we had a few other uh, portable toilet uh, people, you know, that took care of them. Make to shorten that one is we ultimately purchased, or the state purchased them for us. The units that are down there, we actually own. They're not rented, and that saves us a lot of money because we're not paying rental fees. We only pay cleaning fees. Well, Ricky's porta potty is is who we got them from originally. He's also the one that's been servicing them for about twenty years, and he's kind of retiring. Uh, somewhat. So he's merged his operation with this regional restrooms, which is, you have a copy of it in there. And he is staying on board via regional restrooms. And I sent an email to them uh, today, and I will follow up with a uh, telephone call tomorrow and just find out, you know, a little more detail on, on what may or may not change. And I also, in my email, I did let them know that we do own those so that suddenly we don't get a bill for uh, rental uh, units because that adds a lot to the cost. So we'll see. I hope things, because uh, I, I <coughs> gotta say a, a plug for the for the decades that we've had them, done a phenomenal job of, of cleaning the and maintaining those units. Something breaks, they fix it right away. And if something's dirty, they've come out on, almost any day, any time, if something happens, <clears throat> an accident. So at any rate, um, the couple of things that are in here you can read at your leisure is the uh, short-term rental proposal is on page 52. And I just cut these things out, you know, an FYI. Um, on page 53, the, uh, is the information on there's a, there's a road that is, I can I'll quickly summarize it for you. If you go down Hudson Drive right now, it ends the gate. And that gate is uh, Ron Carey's land, to Ron Carey Tilcon's land, where they have their sand pit. There is a, we received a grant to design a, a road that will connect all the way through to Sam West Road and open up that whole area to industrial development, small, um, relatively small parcels, sub parcels. So it would be a continuous road from the end of Hudson Drive all the way to uh, Sam West Road and on out to Tannery Road. And that's what that's all about. 
and it, it should help the situation uh, for those who want to go to the east. They can come out on Hudson Drive on a light. We're hoping in the near future uh, a light will be placed at Tannery Road, and those that need to go north or south and, and west would <clears throat> go out Sam West Road and come out on Tannery Road. So that's and and it would provide a lot more uh, business, you know, industry small industry it's not for like i said they're small uh lot sizes enough to bring in you know relatively small industries uh to that that large tract of land that's there so anyway that's what that's all about you can read that at your at your leisure i don't think there's anything else that's there's some other stuff just an fyi uh the last page is about the tragedy is going up that was voted on by the select board the other night after it was explained that our our tipping costs to get rid of the trash are kind of they took a 20 percent hike and the and if more people uh recycle the more we recycle the less that fee will go up because <laughs> you think about it this way if you put a ton in the trash we pay I think it's like 80, no, $96 a ton to get rid of it. If you put a ton of glass and plastic and paper and cardboard, we get paid for it. We don't get paid $96 a ton, but you get paid. <coughs> so it's money in versus money out. So we just have to all try and recycle more and, and keep that from growing. Um, does anybody else have any anything to bring up? Any questions, any issues? Michelle, I said there was nothing new from CRC. So do you have anything you want to add? Uh, not really. I mean, the book read obviously will be July 1st um, this year. So we'll get that paperwork started. Um, thanks for the reminder on that, Dick. Um, Eric, yes. is, <laughs> Eric is speaking at our next meeting, which we're very grateful for uh, in terms of uh, the lake health so far. Um, and the only other thing I think uh, we're looking at uh, September 23rd for the golf tournament. If you can mark your calendars for a save the date on that Saturday, the 23rd at Edgewood and then the brass rail following. And, okay. and I think just looking uh, for, I'm sorry if you already said it, but a uh, update on the buoy lights and the housing, the adapters. I know that um, Mark was on that pretty quickly for the prototype, but I'm not sure um, if we've seen it. Yeah, I know he went away for a while. Yeah, and, and I've been tied up. Uh, we do stay in touch by email and occasional phone calls. So he's been uh, trying to get that, that first one out. Once we get the first one, and by the way, I'm, I'm glad you did mention that, is that I found uh, the same company now that we're buying our buoys from, because we stopped buying them from Rolling because their prices went up uh, almost 50%, actually more than that. And and uh, and they are the, their process is that buoy that we have that's got multiple seams. The ones that we're buying them from now, they actually make them a lot, they're a lot more efficient in making them. So the costs are, are, are what Rolling used to be. Rolian is actually going to be changing to roto molding, which you basically have a plastic shell and you fill it full of uh, concrete on the bottom and foam on the top, and uh, much much more cost effective manufacturing. And so I just for that heck of it, I went and looked at what they had for lights, and they actually have a, a better pricing on the lights and and uh, the mounting is actually a little bit easier. So what we're gonna do in the in how this prototype was made, instead of having posts, we've been looking at having a disc in there so that we could use <coughs> either light in any adapter. So it'll make it a little more flexible. And it's just a matter of additional drilled and, and tapped holes for the mounting. Otherwise, everything else is the same. That's awesome. I mean, CRC did vote to, you know, cover the nine um, for okay. the channel way through Middle Pines, nice. in our area. Yeah, so we're super excited and can't wait to get that together. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So you voted to purchase nine lights? Excellent. Yeah. Okay, that's super. And I, and what we'll do, 
I assume you still want to do the stay focused on the sandbar area, correct? Yes, that's what we discussed as being the pilot area. Okay. Um, most important at this point in terms of safe navigation through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're on the same page. Yeah. All righty. So, I, you know, it, it doesn't come fast, but we also haven't been able to get the buoys in, by the way, because the boat is still in sick bay. So Kurt's working on it. So I'm not sure uh, exactly what's what's happened, but uh, Rick Wylack went to to set buoys and he turned the key and nothing. So whether it was battery related or what, whatever, um, it's it's in sick bay at Saunders. So does anybody have anything else? I, I just love to check on the water level. Water level as of today was. 224 feet, eight inches. It dropped a half an inch since the other day. And I'm watching it. I'll watch it again tomorrow. I'll check it again. But it, the water flow out is heavy right now because it's, it's over the top of the gates by quite a bit. Oh, yeah. You can tell it's up here on North Pond. Yeah. It, it, well, it's running high. Eight inches is high. It's uh, running, what, uh, three or four inches high. Yeah, it did. So it should be five inches this time of year. So it's three yeah. inches high. And it's still coming in pretty heavy from Goose Pond. <laughs> yeah, I saw yeah. that. I saw that. And, and then, um, we're going to get rain good, this weekend. It's a good yeah, thing we have those. Week, I think. It's a good thing we have those new weir gates on <laughs> Berkshire Avenue because Great Brook is was up at the at one time I checked it during the storm, and it was up almost two feet above the lake, and it's still a good foot above the lake, so that mm. we would be emptying. Lots and lots of water from Great Brook if we didn't have those gates in there. And how many inches of rain did we actually get? About six. And it's and the reason I say that, it was spotty. I heard uh, my, my rain gauge, I had two gauges out, and one had six, one had seven, but they were in different, different areas, and they're mm -hmm. slightly different. One has like a, a, a leaf by the side, and that has had less water in it. So I think it was blowing rain part of the time and it, it shielded it. But the one that was totally open mouth had seven inches of water in it. <laughs> so that would have been equivalent to about five feet of snow if we'd gotten snow. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. So, so. Norm would like to uh, thank Eric and Dick uh, for getting that appeal in on time. I know it was a lot of work and uh, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Norm. Thank you. Yep. It was a it was a lot of, <laughs> a lot of time, but you know we got it in, in time. We're Just really the pushing way. against the clock. <laughs> hey, Nick, any way. update on right. leaves? Any update on leaves in the lake in North Pond? No, leaves? I mean, oh, you... I'm sorry. What was that? Yeah. Any update? On gonna, leaves, leaves being put into North Pond. I'm just going to stop my video for a minute and maybe that'll help. So Deb was just asking if there's any update on leaves being, uh, people intentionally putting leaves oh, in the lake in North Pond. So, no. So Deb, uh, you, we did. Deb you, you saw my response and then Ken came back with a dramatically more thorough response. Right. Um, <laughs> But the you know, but the other point I made in my short response is it's illegal in the state of Massachusetts to do that. Right. <clears throat> right. And besides then, being bad. <laughs> right. The, besides being bad. And then and then um Ken did a good job of explaining why, you know, I was I was explaining that it's actually a noticeable source of nitrogen and I'm mean, excuse me, of phosphorus, and then Ken explained why. It, while the leaves are very important in terrestrial systems in the food chain and can even have some effect in a stream, the moment you go to wetlands or a lake, they're really not significant for a food source, but they are significant for a phosphorus source. And, and so that's the, that's the reason why it's in, in, in most states, it is either illegal or discouraged, one or the other. In right. Massachusetts, it's illegal. How how would the landowners be advised? Because it, it may be just ignorance on their part. 
Yeah. And and I think, you know, in the past, Dick has tried to, you know, uh, have a communications campaign, you know, to try and explain to people that it no, it is bad for the it's bad for the lake water quality. Oh, and incidentally, illegal to put uh, yard waste like leaves and grass clippings into a Massachusetts waterway or wetlands. Right. Yeah, we've actually discussed that before in length. It's come up before. And uh, so I guess it's a, a just continuous education. Yes. Absolutely. And it should, should, be, like, should be something mentioned at a CRC meeting. It would help as well. Good point. One thing which I, which in, which I didn't realize Ken told me is uh, some lakes have gone as far as to actually cut down um, deciduous trees that are near the lake and replace them with evergreens. He said there are some some lakes that a, they actually go that far because you know just naturally blown in lake leaves blow in. And he's not saying let's go do that. He's just telling me in some lakes they actually do that. Ah. But in our in our case, it's like look, there are ones that are going to naturally blow in, but no, don't you, you know the lake is not a nice place to <laughs> dump your yard waste. Agree. I ask a question. Um, I'm sorry because I'm new to this part of this is the discussion. But um, so, has this homeowner been approached by either a conservation commission, LMC, the police department, anything like that, or what action was taken? I believe he's still unidentified. Well, how do we know what happened? Um, the person that advised me at a CRC meeting didn't want to name names, but they said there was more than one. Yeah. person doing that just blowing their leaves into the lake yeah. so and, and, i asked and, dick you know is there some way we can let people know they're not supposed to do that and, they may not know and and <laughs> you know, and it's clear that people didn't know because it, you know some folks also responded and said hey no lakes are good you know they're 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 uh, good for the food chain they're not bad for the lake stop telling people to stop putting leaves in the lake, but but they didn't realize, no, actually, they are bad for the lake and they're and it's illegal to put them in the lake. So clearly that that education campaign uh, needs work. Well, we would absolutely take that on for CRC. I'm confident that people yep. would um, advocate to do that. And is there, where would you point me to for the um, information on the illegality of that, that I could... So yeah, and so, then it's uh, like a flyer, and we can put it put it out on the lake. Uh, okay, that's... so the uh, somebody can forward you, Dick, uh, not Dick, um, Ken's yes. discussion of why it's bad for the lake. I'll do it. Okay, okay thanks. Yeah, did that come out to I, everybody? Because I didn't see it. This is Mike DeBay. I'm sorry. I had emailed it uh, back uh, to the to the whole LMC and I think I caught, I usually copy CRC on it via uh, mm -hmm. Michelle, but um, cause Ken, Ken did a lengthy write up on it and, right. and, and as did Eric. So there's a lot of information from the, from the two uh, that <coughs> we need to share with everybody. And, right. and maybe Michelle, you know, maybe a, like a banner on the CRC website um, saying, you know, leaves with a thing through it bad <laughs> show somebody raking and facebook too you know putting on a yeah. facebook, but i don't see why we couldn't create a flyer and distribute it uh you know to those homes there that's a pretty easy yeah. well actually to homes around the lake we that may be something that people would vote for yeah, yeah and, and i think i think in most cases it's just people didn't realize they thought and it, i, I understand it. why you would think it's okay and look, there are some that blow in for sure. People just don't realize, no, it, it's, you know, it, it's harmful to the lake. You know, when you're clearing your leaves, no, you got to haul them away. Don't, don't dump them in the lake. Uh-huh. Yeah. By, by the way, most of you live on the Southwick side of the lake. The leaves that come in on the Southwick side of the lake, trust me, every fall, come across the lake and then die on, the, on my side of the lake and sink right there. And we got all the muck. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I, rake, I rake our, I rake ours out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You rake them out into the lake. Thanks. No, no, no. Out of the, no, out no, of the, the lake. lake ah, okay. It takes well, a while, me. but it's worth it. I, I get a ton of them every year 
they hit my dock and die right there. Yeah. <laughs> so do we have anything else, anybody? Nope. I will entertain a motion to adjourn if if that's the case. I'll make the motion. I second. A second. That was Eric made the motion? Yep. 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 And who seconded? Norm. Take the bay. Or Norm. Take the bay. Take okay. Norm. That's fine. I don't care. As long Take as does. Norm. <laughs> and all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. We're out of here. It was Aye. only.